Hi, we are very honoured to uh, have uh, Mr. Joe Siddiq, the uh, director of the uh, uh, Georgetown Festival, to be with us uh, to talk about the uh, coming uh, up and coming Georgetown Festival. Yeah. Uh, welcome, uh, you. Joe. Thank okay. you. Okay. Um, Great to be here. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. Um, can you tell us a bit uh, about the uh, specialty of, uh, or what's the you know uh, major con uh, major attraction of the uh, Georgetown Festival this year? This year or as in general? Um, this year? Uh, this year we have some really interesting mm -hmm. uh, world-class acts that are coming. Uh -huh. There's a dancer called Sidi Labi mm. who's performing a play called, uh, who's do doing a piece called Play which has never been performed in Asia. Okay. Yeah, and we also have the director of uh, a new production called The Kitchen from New Delhi mm. who was famous for his uh, Manganiya seduction. Mm -hmm. So we have some very interesting acts. We mm. also have two commission plays, nice. one with So Tiong Hen, who's mm -hmm. Malaysian, mm -hmm. uh, a Hokkien play, and mm -hmm. we have another mm -hmm. big production called Two Houses, mm. a collaboration between Singapore and us. For the past uh, five years, right? So the, the response has been enormous, right? I mean, it's well, I mean, Good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know about enormous, but good. We have a steady growth, yeah. A steady growth. So what is the success behind the, the, the growth, the, 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 you know, the, uh, of the Georgetown Festival? I think um, Georgetown itself is the main mm -hmm. component. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. Georgetown, the rejuvenation, mm -hmm. rejuvenation of Georgetown, mm -hmm. the uh, I must say the freedom to curate mm -hmm. a festival right. given to me by the state of Penang mm -hmm. has helped it a lot, mm -hmm. um, and the people, the people of Georgetown. Um, yeah. So th there's no intervention at all, and or there's no direction. Yeah. So you can decide yes. the whole. Yeah, I mean, thing. I think one of the mm -hmm. the most privileged. I get mm -hmm. is actually the freedom to curate the festival. Yeah. That I have no intervention. Mm. I curate, pr plan the programs, mm -hmm. and execute mm -hmm. the programs. But at the end of everything, we are audited, the accounts are audited. Okay. Yeah. But the, con the control of material that goes, of course, I respect religion, mm -hmm. I respect mm -hmm. the countries, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we respect the laws of the country. But the curation of the programming is left totally up to me. Okay. So basically, you uh, in some of the interview you said the the, um, the the focus is to get the make it a, a, a um, gathering of the Southeast Asia heritage uh, and stuff like that. But then actually now you are branching out like more people, more I mean a performance maybe from outside of the region are coming in as well, right? So it is grow. Maybe, is it no, grow? actually it's the other yeah. way around. I, we started with we are starting. We mm. started five years ago mm. with a lot of international shows, okay. and we still have a lot of international shows. But these international shows are brought in to inspire mm -hmm. us. My long-term roadmap yeah. is Southeast Asia. Okay. I want to make Malaysia the center of Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. I feel as if we have 600 million people, mm -hmm. a lot of talent floating around this area. Mm -hmm. I think we can play host to being the hub of South. South Southeast Asia. So there's no, I mean, um, some of the, you know, when uh, promoter of arts in Malaysia or Southeast Asia, they will very much highlight, want to highlight the local identity and stuff like that. But I, I have a sense that the uh, uh, Georgetown Festival is just very much very open. And then you, uh, I, yeah, I can understand why the need to highlight local mm -hmm. artists because we should be very proud of our uh, local yeah. act. But we also need to know what's happening out there. Right. So I think by sh bringing in international act and putting on the same platform, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. your local act, you both can understand where you are. Okay. For the foreigners to, to know how, oh, how stunning our pieces mm -hmm, are, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and for us to know how, well, how good they are too. Mm -hmm. So I think for me, it's basically to show on the same platform, right. international acts and our local acts, you know, mm -hmm. rather than focusing. But at the end of the day, it's about us. It's about how we bring our people out. Right. How we sell a show out. I mean, right. for me, the roadmap would be when can we bring a show to Lincoln Center, New York, oh, okay. and make people pay to see, mm. rather than ah, let's bring a tourism show or culture show, yeah. and then people are yeah, invited. I want the day that we bring a show that people pay to see. Mm. So yeah, you actually touched on a very important point that nowadays a lot of the you know like cultural events used to be in. in uh, Third world country or Southeast Asia yeah. is, is a cultural event. It's a, it's a tourism event yeah. rather than a cultural event itself. Mm -hmm. So you want to upgrade. I mean, in the West, it's the, uh, the, the culture itself is a, is a good business and attraction. As mm -hmm. and, uh, so. If you notice what's happening like in, mm -hmm. in Hong Kong and mm -hmm. Macau and Singapore, how art festivals mm -hmm. has been used as both as um, mm -hmm. uh, tourism uh, to a tourism um, uh, point mm -hmm. at the same time trying to promote culture. I mm -hmm. think it's a good balance. Mm -hmm. So Singapore has done a successful okay. model. 
uh, Hong Kong does mm -hmm. it, uh, Sydney, Melbourne, mm -hmm. Adelaide, they all have international festivals. You know? mm. And the idea is to marry culture, art, tourism, and maybe a dollar sign. Because at the yeah. end of the day, you need to sustain yeah, it. Yeah, you know? So I think Singapore does it really well. Mm -hmm. They've been around mm -hmm. for 37 years. Okay. They've put out and it's been a successful model. Oh, yeah. uh, in Malaysia, uh, we, we, I think for me, for certainly when I first started, I looked at Singapore, I looked at Malacca, I looked at Kuala Lumpur International mm -hmm. Festival, mm -hmm. and I looked at this Johor Festival. And I used this as benchmark of how I wanted mm -hmm. to grow the festival. Yeah, you, you have said before, we have so many talents, but is it the problem that we don't have enough uh, uh, platform to, to, you know, to, to let the talent perform? And, uh, to, to um, I'm not sure exactly what it is. Like, mm -hmm. I was invited mm -hmm. to Hong Kong to speak at a yeah. forum once called Asia on the mm -hmm. Edge, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. what I said was, we have 600 million people in Southeast Asia, and I feel that Malaysia, Indonesia, mm -hmm. Thailand mm -hmm. and Philippines, we have all the talent, but we don't have the mechanics of how Singapore or Hong Kong does their packaging. Mm. They package their festival, they package their forums, they package their uh, trade shows to a world, to a world audience. Okay. We seem to do it and the world is not coming to us or we're not going out there. Mm -hmm. So I, I feel as if there's something to be learned from Singapore and Hong Kong mm -hmm. and how they've done it. So mm. I feel as if, if we all get together and share the resources, maybe we have the right mechanics to go to. Right. But then I think in local scenes we have a lot of uh, maybe people art, artists and stuff like that. But they and they they always uh, you know complains about looking for a bigger platform or fund their fund their projects. Um, you know getting the audience attention yeah. because it used to be art scenes used to be a very small yeah. size uh, kind of um, you know gathering. Yeah, it's, I I believe you can you should not ask you should just do mm -hmm. really. Um, you know, at the end of the day, nobody owes us anything, whether mm -hmm. you're in the arts mm -hmm. or in mm -hmm. architecture or whatever. I think that the problem is everywhere, not just in Malaysia. Right. The audiences are dwindling. Okay. And because why art has always been seen as elitist, mm. people, well, people feel afraid, uh, intimidated by the arts and mm -hmm. culture. Mm -hmm. we, we want to try to bring arts to the people, meaning that we make it very accessible. Mm. You don't have to be rich, cultured, okay. uh, educated or creative to be able to appreciate the arts. Mm -hmm. A good example would be the success of the Ernest Mural. Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. many thousands of people mm -hmm. have gone and taken pictures there. Right. Now that to me is magical because you're standing in front of an art piece without realizing that you are connecting with art. Mm -hmm. Now if you walk through a uh, show on the street and you see something and you're actually participating in culture right. without realizing it. But if I ask you to go into a gallery, you may not go. Mm. The thousands of people that have taken pictures against Ernest's yeah. work may not have walked into a gallery. Right. So bringing arts to the people is what we're trying to do with Georgetown Festival. Okay. We make the shows outside, mm. we make it affordable, we mm. have some world-class acts for 20 ringgit. Nowhere in the world can you see the same show mm. for 20 ringgit. Nowhere in the world. Mm. So that's something we are very proud about, about bringing arts to the people. It's very community-driven. Uh, yeah, but besides bringing out to the to the community and uh, bringing maybe to the international stage, um, is it possible that how we should bring arts back to the school, the younger generation, the, in our curriculum? Definitely, yeah. I think um, I was very fortunate. I was asked to, uh, to participate in Teach for Malaysia. Mm. I went to a mainland school, mm -hmm. thirteen-year-old Malay kids. They have no idea about culture or arts or they only know K-pop. They could name you yeah. all the K-pop stars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They know who Justin Bieber is. They know a few Malaysian pop stars. But above and beyond that, they have no idea mm -hmm. of culture or yeah. art or creativity. So I decided to adopt them because I think that's where we're missing out on. Mm -hmm. Culture and arts is not for the tourists. Yeah. We should instill it in our own people. So it's not about doing the shows for the tourists. It's doing the shows for our own people. Right, I I think the similarity of maybe our education system is too much oriented, exam oriented. Mm. You know, it's like arts has always been <laughs> just a subject, or or you know, it's like uh, they're the they're lucky son. It's like always like uh, the easy subject to pass, and there's no, 
you know, real understanding about what what is it to your life. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I mean, I bring in a lot of interns, mm-hmm. and I find something really wrong. Not in just the government school. What is even worse, it's in the private schools in yeah. Malaysia, where the students are just told how to pass exams. Yeah, they yeah. cut and paste, and there's no self development. So, as an artist, you're just uh, a technical drawer. You have no ideas of your own. Mm-hmm. You are not creative. You have no communication skills. So how do you work? Yeah. So I think yeah, I think something missing. I think what is missing is they are not teaching the, the students to grow, but teaching them how to pass exams. Yeah, so right. cut, paste, pass exams. Yeah. And as a person, you don't know. You don't grow. Mm-hmm. So you're talking now. There's a new model. Where, whether we should be uh, artists, we should have people who actually, you know, know the business side of it and yeah. uh, sustainability of it, and then promo promotion of it. But do we have enough uh, people who focus on 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 the no. other side? No, I, I think we know. I think a lot of artists. I attend a lot of forums, and there's a lot of angry artists. Mm. I find it really. I mean, I have lost money. I have not been able to get money for sponsorship. Mm. I still struggle after five mm-hmm. years. Mm. It's not been easy. It's still not mm. easy. But I don't. I'm not an angry person. Because mm. I think at the end of the day, it's up to you to find ways. Mm. You know, nobody owes you anything. I mean, certainly the uh, banks or corporations mm. don't owe you anything. So you need to find a way to find the business side of the arts. Mm. You need to be smart about it in order to be able to sustain. If not, you'll be always relying on grants, mm. and you can't grow. You know, you need to grow. Yeah. Is it now you are you are more on a sustainable side or, or no? Not yet. Not yeah, yet. Not it yet. normally takes about five to seven years mm-hmm. for a festival to to be anchored. Okay. Let's not talk about sustainable. Let's talk about being anchored and mm. being known. It takes five to seven years for a festival to be known. I mean, mm. look at all the festival module. Mm-hmm. Look at Singapore. Mm-hmm. It's thirty-seven years old. Mm. The government is still pumping money in it. Mm-hmm. It's not as if it yeah. ever will be sustainable. Mm-hmm. But I think at some point it is a, a job not. It should not be placed upon the government alone. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It should be by the corporations. It should be by the yeah, people yeah. to pay to, to be able to appreciate the art. So it's everybody's responsibility. It's not the, just the government. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it means the government can can be still providing the seed funds. Yeah, the government then, should give a base. Yeah, the government yeah, base, should help, yeah, yeah. but the government should not be re- totally responsible for the mm-hmm, festival. I think mm-hmm. it's a wrong module when you expect the government to put all the money. Mm-hmm. I think it should be a balance between the government, the people, and corporations. Is it possible for for the grassroots to suggest to your what they want to work. Yes, of course. Uh, uh, we have, yeah, they, yeah. they always have an open call. Every mm-hmm, year, mm-hmm. Uh, sometime in November, we have an open call. Okay. And people come up with all sorts of suggestions. Okay. Some really mad, some <laughs> really good. But this year, we had 270 proposals from yeah. all over wow. the world. Okay. I turned down a lot of big shows from abroad because I just felt it was not the right, right, yeah. uh, right mix for us. Mm. It's not that I choose foreign or local, I yeah. choose good shows. Yeah. Or I choose shows that I feel is uh, integral to this year's festival. Can you give an example some of the shows that you choose? To it's very hard to explain because yeah. I mean, everybody asks yeah. me, oh, what is your team for the yeah. festival? I say, I mm. don't have a team. Mm. The team is Georgetown. The team is to inspire. Mm. The team is to um, reach out to the community. Mm. So like this year, like one year I brought in the show called Mangania Seduction. Mm. It was Rajasthani yeah. musicians in red boxes. Yeah. I just saw the visual. I thought, my God, this is so interesting. And I, when I saw it, I thought, okay, this is how you should show traditional shows because mm-hmm. you're selling a show to a contemporary audience. Yeah. Why would uh, 18 year old kid watch a show if they don't like traditional music? But they might watch it because mm-hmm. it's, my God, it's an amazing production. So that was why I brought in Mangania Seduction. This year, we commissioned a play called Two Houses mm. because I'm always intrigued by the stories of the rich of Penang in the 30s and 40s yeah. and how they lived in all these big houses mm. and how there was love, intrigue, mm. power, mm-hmm. egos, mm. money. Mm-hmm. And then, so we commissioned someone to write about it. Mm-hmm. So I think most of the shows that I pick mm. is because I suppose it's a bit self indulgent. I want to learn. Oh yeah. I want to learn and I want to be learning about Indigo. This year we have a project uh, called uh, Indigo. Okay. So I've commissioned someone to work on a project with art, ceramics, design, mm-hmm. textiles, mm. uh, fashion. So mm. I, 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 can, I, I suppose I'm guilty because I actually <laughs> choose, I choose the programs okay. because I feel as if, if I can like it, 
somebody out there will really want to lo- want to share the same mm. learning journey as yeah, I do. Yeah. yeah, but the main point is you you yourself must. L- it's a human e- thing. Enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. It's a very very basic mm. human thing. I mm. I don't think I'm clever to say hey, mm. that's the hottest show that came out of Japan or this is the big show that came out of this. It is a child in me that picks out. Wow, that's so funny or that's so intriguing or that's so unusual that I want to have a look at it. So mm. it's a very basic uh, feel about something that I, that's how I curate. Mm-hmm. You, you, you think that the same model can be replicated in, in other states and other areas? I don't think the model, okay, the mm. model you can, but not the content. I mean, mm. I've been asked mm-hmm. to do festivals. Mm. I've been asked to do the KL International Festival. Mm-hmm. I've been asked to do something in Singapore. Mm. But you know, I think what you need to do is to be to create your own identity. Okay. What is special about your your festival? Mm. Now, I think for for 20 years, Singapore has been very successful. But the module of just buying big shows yeah. is no longer, I think, a good module mm. because anyone can buy a big show. Mm. Anyone can build a Lego Land mm. or Disneyland. Yeah, yeah. Anyone with money. So now comes Macau, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, mm. uh, Hong Kong. That has a lot of money out there floating. Yeah. So. Buying alone does not make you big. Mm. Anybody can buy Rihanna. Mm-hmm. Anybody can buy um, mm-hmm. Jersey Boys. Yeah. Anyone can. Mm-hmm. The important thing is, what do you have special? Mm. What is your own that you are creating, that you are selling to these people? Mm. Yeah, but so then, but then on the other hand, we are also selling the same thing like Southeast Asia, more or less the same. I mean, no, no. Yeah? I, I, I believe that. Mm. I mean, like this for Georgetown, mm. I commission things. Mm. I make shows site specific. Okay. I make the story about Georgetown. It has to be something that's linked to us. Yeah, and but but, but because you you make because uh, I mean when, whenever now if you look at the uh, out scenes out there, you have the slaksa. I mean I mean that yeah. but but you, you need to. I studied that. Uh, I yeah, felt yeah. as if there's something very important about Georgetown mm. and the story of Georgetown is interesting. So mm. like one good example is how strong the coffee shops community right. is in Georgetown. Okay. So this year we have. A whole series of exhibition in the coffee shops. So you deepen it. You 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 you. No, I you use know, it. I you use, use it. I use uh, the yeah. Georgetown as a canvas. Yeah. So to me, that's very important. It's mm. like how do you create a unique okay. identity that's all your own, mm-hmm. rather than buy. You yeah. buy. Anyone can buy. Okay. You can put together the biggest world class shows mm-hmm. by bringing all the big acts. Mm-hmm. Now that's only money. Yeah. What's to stop Jakarta or yeah, Manila yeah, yeah. to do the same? So I think what we need to do is to build up what's ours, what is uniquely ours. Mm-hmm. So then it becomes your own identity. Then you, you f- I mean, I would love to do a, a cat festival in Kuching. Okay. You know, I'm hoping to do a cat festival <laughs> in Kuching. I w- would love to do mm-hmm. an Islamic festival in KL. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. we have Moorish architecture, we have the Islamic museum. Yeah. We have a, a lot of interesting ingredients there. Mm-hmm. But I mean, if somebody asks me, I would come tomorrow to do a festival here. Right. Um, what do you see the uh, future direction of, let's say, Georgetown Festival? Uh, maybe in learning. five years' time? No, no. I think at the moment I'm still learning. Uh. I would like to position Malaysia as uh. the center of Southeast Asia. I'm using Georgetown only because it's a really small village. Yeah. It's a small city. People would fly in anyway. Okay. You know, it, it's a actually a calculated why I do it, Georgetown uh. Festival. Okay. In Georgetown, one is the name. Mm. And w- the number of flights that have direct mm-hmm. flights to Georgetown, yeah, yeah. that people will come anyway, and there's things to do, and you can walk around. Yeah. It's an intimate festival. Yeah, I think that's the success of Edinburgh. It's an intimate festival. Okay, it's not a international festival that has no feeling. Yeah, yeah. F- f- fest- big festivals are everywhere. Mm. Everyone is doing festivals. Everyone right. is doing big shows. Mm. So I think you need to be uniquely different. Like our project called Indigo, mm. we've managed to hopefully get a, an old house mm. where we will turn it into a pop-up shop, pop-up exhibition space, uh, a place to do mm. workshops. Mm. Mm. Uh, like two houses is going to be sh- uh, done in a site-specific mm. old mm. mansion called mm. the Sunstead. Mm. 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 So um, we're turning Day One Sri Penang into a creative design center. Okay. And this is something that I feel, how come Malaysia, as right. a forward nation, we don't have a creative design center. Yeah. I was in Chiang Mai, I was invited to talk about creative cities and I thought, if Chiang Mai can do it, so let me try to show that, hey, if we can turn it into a temporary pop-up creative design yeah, center, yeah, yeah. maybe somebody from the authorities will say, hey, we need one, we really need one to yeah, inspire our students. Yeah, yeah. As a director of, of art festival, and you've been looking at also the, what the, the young people are, the, the, what's the, the grabs of the arts ideas, Okay, let's say if if you have the opportunity, do what 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 thing, what what kind of things that you you think we should immediately execute at our you know education or among the young people to you know bring them back to the arts. I, I that's a really. Yeah. I mean, I'm 56 years old, 
but the world belongs to the youth now. Okay. Seriously, yeah. you know, it's the social media, mm -hmm. it's the way that they pick up things. Now, if we don't expose the young to the arts and culture, where will our children be today? Mm -hmm. uh, our, our kids now know Justin Bieber, know every K-pop star, but they don't know any of your own. Yeah, yeah. That, that is the success of the uh, you know K-pop industry. But see, no, yeah, but yeah. See, I, I was invited to Korea mm -hmm. uh, last year, right. and I was invited uh, by the mm. Korean arts performing arts company groups, and they have. All, I thought, well, music is just K-pop, mm. but their traditional music is amazing. Mm. I am bringing in two young Korean women mm. who play five traditional instruments, wow. and it, it was one of the most amazing shows that I saw. Mm. What was most amazing was they take pride in their traditional instrument. Yeah. Now, why isn't our Malaysian kids yeah. wanting to play traditional instruments? Why do our kids want to sound like American Idol stars? Yeah. Why do our kids not want to listen to our own sounds? And, and marry it, mm -hmm. our, our mm -hmm. own yeah, traditional yeah, sound. Yeah, yeah. So I, I wanted to bring them because I wanted to inspire Malaysian, young Malaysian people. Do not be afraid of your traditional instruments. Yeah. Do not be afraid of your traditional sounds. Mm. And these young, two young yeah. girls have travelled mm. the world in their show, okay. playing traditional instruments. Mm. Right. Yeah? So I think it belongs to them. I think if we can bring the young kids into culture mm. and arts now, I think then it's the next generation safety.